disclaimer. I've had a card that I've been wanting to play with for a long time. I finally got time to do it. The package looks great. It's a concept. It's off the ladder. Welcome to the channel at Resolves, where we play a different deck list every video. My name is Country Fried, and today, Pound of Flesh, or Zob Tokens. Let's take a look. guys again a disclaimer this orzov tokens package is just concept right now i ran a lot of it just off the ladder and it worked really well off ladder so i'm just kind of trying to tighten it up i think there's something there but i wanted to put the deck list out to you guys you guys can mess around with it it's got a lot of interactions a lot of synergy i absolutely love it i think there's something there but i think it could probably be a little tighter than it is right this second but let's go ahead and take a look at the deck list i'll let you guys get to the gameplay we do pop off in one of the games uh looked like the uh, opponent got hung up on just a really bad hand but uh yeah we went absolutely berserk so definitely check that out and stick around till the outro as well and we'll uh just sign off with a couple of thoughts about this all right real quick our removal package, Faithful Absence and Rite of Oblivions are in here as a two of and a two of just to kind of help us take control or take uh, care of the board state with stuff that we can't hit with Depopulate and Meat Hook. So Rite of Oblivion can hit whatever non-land permanent we need to exile. And then uh, Faithful Absence is definitely there to help us back up against Planeswalkers. We also use Depopulate in here. You may see gameplay where there's Path of Peril, but we took it out because Depopulate works really well with the creature package we've got. we got a lot of multicolored creatures. And instead of just casting Path of Peril at 6 to do a complete board wipe and get nothing out of it, this way we at least get some card draw. Excuse me. Pizza. <laughs> the meatloaf master the meatloaf <laughs> the meat hook massacres in here for uh the life ping the gain and drain off of the life as well because creatures we control that die uh your opponent loses one life and whenever an opponent's creature dies you gain one life and of course you can use it as a sweeper but we can also use it as insurance in this package this is a package where you could just throw this down to ensure your board state uh, for our creature package, here's our gain and drain package. We've got Lunark Veteran in here as a four of. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we gain a life. And then if it dies and we bring it back for its disturb cost, it's got flying. It's a one one. And whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, you gain one life. Uh, we got LS Hill Core Sadistic Pilgrim in here, one of my favorite cards from the new set. It's 2-2 two, two, Death Touch, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So there's a lot of synergy with the gain and drain going on here, guys, and it's just going to get bigger the further we go into this package. We have Shieldred, the Apocalypse in here. I think everybody understands what this card is by now. It's Death Touch. It's 4 or 5. Whenever you draw a card, you gain 2 life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose 2 life. We've only got it as one of because this is not the center of our package. Our package is the Gain and Drain, and it all works synergistically together. Coming up next is the card that I've been wanting to play with that I haven't had time, but we finally put a package together that I think has something there. We just got to kind of tighten it up a little bit. And that is Flesh Taker. Flesh Taker is a one white, one black, two, two human assassin. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and you scry one. You can pay one and sacrifice another creature to Flesh Taker and it gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. So if you sacrifice creatures, this thing gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. And if you've got two of these on the field and you do, you do the sacrifice with one, both of them get the plus two, plus two. I didn't know that, but I saw it in the game. So now I'm aware. We also have braids in here as a sacrifice outlet. And you're wondering why there's a sacrifice outlet. Well, it's Orzov tokens. We're getting there. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact creature, enchantment land, or planeswalker. So we're just kind of stressing the creatures for the opponent out. Um, and then, of course, if they don't want to sacrifice their creature, they lose two life and you draw a card. And Braids is a 3-3. What's really cool about this is we don't have to really worry about the creatures on the field, guys. Once this gets going, we start gaining so much life, it's absolutely ridiculous. We have three wedding announcements in here. At the beginning of your end step, put an invitation counter on wedding announcement. If you attacked with two or more creatures this turn, draw a card. Otherwise, you create a one, one white human creature token. And then when it does have three, uh, three invitation counters on it, you flip it and all your creatures get plus one, plus one. So we're either creating things that we can sacrifice to flesh taker and braids, or we're getting card draw. So we're either getting creatures, blockers, or sacrifice fodder. 
or we're drawing a card. So wedding announcement is absolute value in this package. I'm trying to figure out a way to get it up to four. I just don't know how yet because everything else is pretty crucial in this deck as well. Adeline's in here with a three of as well. It works really well with this package. Whenever you attack with a creature, you make a one, one human creature token tapped and attacking. And more often than not, the opponent's going to block up the token, but not a flesh taker. So you just sacrifice the token to flesh taker and then get in your cheap four damage off a of flesh taker. And if they don't read flesh taker and they block up flesh taker and it's below a four, four, because otherwise you're probably not attacking in with flesh taker. Then you sacrifice the token to flesh taker and you kill off their creature. So flesh taker is a whole lot of utility in this deck list. Really nice. Plus you gain life off of it and you get to scry one. Um, we also have rabble rousing in here. So whenever we attack with a creature, depending on how many creatures you attack with, that's how many one, one citizen creatures tokens you make and you put them on the board. And then if you have 10 or more creatures, you get to cast the hideaway five card that you put underneath rabble rousing. There's one particular card in here. We're usually trying to get under there, but we're getting there. We also have Edgar in here as a one of because he's hard to remove. And of course, if you do lose him, he becomes the coffin as long as he wasn't exiled. He starts making one, one white, black vampire creature tokens. And then once he gets three counters on the coffin, then of course you flip him back over. He's a four, four and all your vampire tokens that are still alive are now two twos. What's really cool is the synergy with Radadrabic. If they kill off Edgar and leave Radadrabic, Edgar's coffin is still created, but now you get a 2-2 zombie that's an Edgar as well. So your vampires are automatically coming out as 2-2s. And then when it flips back over, the Edgar created off of Radadrabic is no longer legendary. And you've got two Edgars on the board, and now your vampires are 3-3s. Three and then if you've got wedding announcements with plus one, plus one counters, it just goes crazy, guys. There is a lot of synergy going on here. Ratadravik's another favorite of mine from the new set as well. Kind of goes hand in hand with Sadistic Pilgrim. It's got Vigilance. It's got Ward 2. It's got 3-3. Three, three. It's got all the things that we love to do when we're making a janky deck list. Other zombies you control have Vigilance. And whenever a legendary, another legendary creature you control dies, you create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not a legendary anymore, and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Absolutely beautiful in this deck list. Absolutely beautiful in this deck list. Most people still don't even know how to handle Ratadrabic, and that Ward 2 is no joke. They just don't know how to get around it. I mean, a meat hook for three, probably real easy. But as far as spot removal, this guy's a pain in the butt on the field. Glad he's on our side. And then, of course, what we want to put under rabble, rabble rousing, if at all possible, is dread, uh, dread Feast Demon. It is a 6-6 six, six for 7. It's got flying. We're not looking to hard cast this anytime soon. We're hoping to get it under rabble rousing. And then, of course, at the beginning of your end step, you sacrifice a non-demon creature. And if you do, you create a token that's a copy of Dread, uh, Dread Feast Demon. So if we got all these tokens on the field and we ended up casting this out from underneath rabble rousing, now we're just making 6-6 six, six flyers like crazy. And they're super hard to get rid of. So there's the synergy of the package, guys. It's crazy. It's nuts. You're going to see one game where it really just pops off. And like I said, looks like my opponent got kind of screwed with whatever hand that they had, but we got to showcase the deck. So I'm not complaining too much. Our land package is two seats of, of the Empire, the Aganjos, so we can do damage to creatures blocking or attacking. Got five planes, four swamps, two Takanumas in case we need to return a creature from the graveyard, which normally, if we do, we're trying to get Adeline back because we're really liking the Adeline synergy with Flesh Taker. It's amazing. Don't underestimate it. We also have the four caves in here, the four sanctums, and then the three Plaza of Heroes. Look, people still aren't reading Plaza of Hero. For that three cost, and you sacrifice it, and you can make a legendary creature hexproof and indestructible. So keep attacking in with your Pilgrim if you've got Plaza of Heroes and enough mana on the field. When they finally do decide to block it because it's got Death Touch and they just need to get it off the field, then you pop this, you make it indestructible, and you still keep it around. And then they'll read Plaza of Heroes once it's exiled. But that's their fault, not ours. Even I don't like to read cards, but sometimes I have to, so I know what's going on. 
But with that, guys, I'm going to let you guys get to the gameplay. I'll catch you with the outro. It's a lot of fun. This deck has got something. I really think this deck's got something. I'd love to hear your comments below. I'm looking for ideas on this one. Uh, we'll definitely cover a couple in the outro. But until then, stay safe, be happy, and healthy. I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Please hit that thumbs up. It's free of charge. It helps out the channel. We love it when you guys support us. Peace. <laughs> we'll see you guys at the end of the video. Okay, opponent goes first. Yeah, we'll keep. This looks good. I guess since Celeste needed a chance and they just have it. Well, that's different. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. We're not even on the ladder. What is going on? Okay. That's fine. We'll try it this way. Um... See if we can do the trick here. Don't know that they read Flesh Taker. So what they got Buna safety. Or is it their guardian? Is their guardian holding it up? Mm. No. It's probably Boone's safety. Ah, oh, Flenick. Flenick, Flenick, Flenick. Should have taken it while you could. That's a good one. Now we're good. See if they got another one. Let's see if they read it. Yeah, we'll take that. Adelaine. Sure. And they're all about Adelaine. That's fine. They're gonna love this next one then.
You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Let it land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh my God, that's so. That's just bad, man. The whole thing is just bad. Um. Sure. I should have attacked him with the better. Dang. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Heck yeah. Attack him with all of it. No blocks. Cool. This is so cool. Flenick, just let it happen, bro. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be amazing. Come on. You're good. <laughs> there were so many live game triggers. <laughs> it was ridiculous. All right, GG's. This month's Patreon rewards feature some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, so we're off the ladder trying to test this out to tighten it up so we can take it on the ladder. Um... Uh, we kept the opening hand. The opponent took a long time. We'll see if we're up against mono red, mono black, or flyers, because that's all we've been up against off the ladder. Holy God, we're up against something different. Watch it be uh, Grixis Graveyard or Reanimator. It's going to be great. Sure. Punish them if they decide to wipe the board. Oh, uh, better infernal grasp something now. Oh, tank to indulgence. So yeah, Grixis reanimator. Right on. That's fine. Can get land, please. Awesome. Thank you. It and draw. Why not? Cool.
Yep, yep. Crack it and go looking. Soul Grace. Right on. Yeah. Heck. Yeah. Meet Rana Dravik. Radadramic's a beast, bro. Radadramic's such a beast, bro. <laughs> There we go. GG's. Right on. Yeah, I mean, it works, man. It works how I wanted it to work, and it works even when it doesn't work the way I wanted it to work. Cool. GG's. Good synergies. All right, we go first. Man, I don't love this if we don't hit a swamp or a toast. Other than that, everything looks great. <laughs> uh, we'll mulligan. Better. All right, we'll keep. Just waiting on the opponent. Sorry. Man, that was rough. Um, yep. Okay, straight to fire rigging. Okay. So what are they gonna drop in? Man? Oh. God, man. This is about to be the most boring game ever. Shit. 
sure. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go like that. Why not? Gotta read Plaza of Heroes. You don't have to, but it helps. It does help. Sure. Okay. Right on. This game is done. Oh my god, bro, what, is, what in the world, man? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so stupid. Hell yeah, as much as possible. Let us do this. Dead. Dead, bro. GG's. GG's. They didn't take off forever, so I feel bad, but at the same time, you got to see what the deck could do. GG. Alright guys, there was gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, there it is. Pound of Flesh, Orzov Tokens. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Look, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, the one thing that I would really like to do is I would like to try and figure out how to get the fourth wedding announcement in here. And I kind of think about taking out the Edgar, but Edgar's really nice, man. He really is a pain in the butt to get out of the field. The other one is I might actually take out Shieldred because we don't absolutely need it. I think I've hit her once and it's not really necessary, but it is a great card. There's so much value in this card that it's making it hard to cut. Dreadfast G Demon, or yeah, Dread Feast Demon has the synergy that goes right along with this deck. So I don't know. I'm looking to get a fourth wedding announcement in there. The other thing I was thinking about was card draw. Uh, we're, pro we're probably looking for a way to maybe get one or two bank busters in here. But again, I don't know where I'd go with that or how I would do it. And would I remove two Fateful Absences and just go to four Ride of Oblivions? Because Ride of Oblivion works in this package really well. So there's my thoughts on it, guys. There's just a couple of small thoughts. Again, leave your comments below. I'd love to hear you guys' ideas on how you may switch this up. I'll definitely leave a link to the uh, deck list in the description below. But there you guys go. Pound of Flesh, Orzob Tokens. So we're getting ready to roll into October. Here's the first of Halloween decks. <laughs> Maybe the last two. Because I'm stuck on Flesh Taker, man. Between Flesh Taker, Sadistic Pilgrim, and Rat of I'm never going to get away from Orzov. But anyways, until next time, guys. Stay safe, be happy, and healthy. Thanks for stopping in. Much love. Peace. We'll see you guys next time.